Well, we're sitting in a very interesting place. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, tell us your name and what you do. And where are we? And what is this interesting screen? And what's the what's it got on it? So who are you and what do you do? My name's Eileen Giles and I am the RT Stream Coordinator here at uh, UniSA. So I'm the Stream Leader of Radiation Therapy. Uh, and what we have behind us is our VERT suite. A VERT? vert yes, what does it stand vert? for? VERT stands for Virtual Environment Radiotherapy Training. So I guess it's like uh, the flight simulator for linear accelerators. Uh, so it's a virtual um, model, if you like. And a linear accelerator, I'm a former cancer patient, it is a, a radiation therapy machine. Right. And, and you're training the people who put the patients on it and run the machine. That's right. Yeah, so undergraduate radiation therapy students do a lot of their preparation for clinical placement right here. Uh, and so we are able to, I guess, do most of the things that you would expect a clinical machine to do, except uh, expose with radiation because it's all virtual. Um, but we are able to mechanically simulate, if you like, uh, all the parameters of a treatment. We can put a virtual patient on the couch. Uh, we can see through them if we want. We can make the skin transparent. We can... What, so you can see the organs or maybe can, in a, yeah. a tumour in the organ? Yes, yes. So it's based on um, a CT scan from a patient's treatment that... I suppose we're able to visualise. So whatever comes across on the CT data set that's been outlined, we can turn it on or we can turn it off. And just explain what a CT is and, and why patients have them before their radiation. So some people wouldn't know them as a CAT scan or a computed tomography scan. Uh, and I suppose if I could explain it as if a patient was a loaf of bread, and I cut them into slices and I looked at each slice individually, I'd be able to see the anatomy in cross-section. Uh, and it uses a grayscale. So there's discrete differences in the density of tissue uh, that you can discern quite visually with the naked eye and you can influence how they look so that things are more prominent. And of course, we can see disease uh, that is different to normal tissue. And we've just been in a, a, a great big lecture theatre with, you know, I think probably a couple of hundred, 250 students, some of whom are training to do this. And they're going out on placement in, in different cancer centres and they've been out on placement in cancer centres. How does this sort of virtual education prepare them for real people in real cancer centres? Well, I suppose it's not really preparing them for that interaction with a real person but it's helping them to understand the theory that they've been learning in a very visual sense. It also allows them to manipulate the equipment in a safe environment where they can't really hurt anything, they can't make a mistake, uh, and they can gain that confidence and competence with the equipment before they use the real deal out in the clinical environment. Well, if you could just follow me, I'm, I'm going to walk to a different part of the room and just ask you a couple of things. If you could come over here, against the wall, we've got these, if you could just stand in front of them and just tell me what on earth are these and how are they used with the students? Uh, so these are immobilisation aids or fixation devices. Um, and these ones in particular are used when we're treating um, predominantly breast patients. Uh, so they have supports, as you can quite imagine. I know they're upside down, but imagine the patient's neck is here and these are the arm supports and the hand supports. Uh, and we're able to adjust it and record exactly how we've set up the patient uh, on a daily basis. Fantastic. And I, I know from my own experience, if you can follow me over here, we'll just come past the skeleton and we're terribly pleased that anatomy and so on is still being taught at universities, um, but, um, you know, everything has to be so precise. The last thing I want to ask you about is down here, there's a couple of masks. And if I look under here, there's even more masks. Yes. You've got masks all over the place. So what are they and how do they fit into your world? So our students 
have to be able to make a mask on a real person. Um, But what they do is they practice making them on each other. So part of their learning, if you like, um, is to uh, have one of these made on each other, but make multiple masks over and over again. Uh Thank you very much. And we'll let the person come in and uh, get working with the technology. But Eileen, thank you very much. You're welcome.